Hello, Vince Hughes here with Still Estimating Solutions. Welcome to the final module of the Fundamentals of Cost Estimating and Bidding. Uh, this is Module 11 of Technology for Estimating. In this module, we're going to be going over the Still Erection Bid Wizard. What we're going to cover is the dashboard in the Bid Wizard, the bid list, task, task and productivity rates, and then we'll jump into creating a, and we'll also go through some the settings within the bid wizard so you kind of see what uh what you guys did over the last four days in module one through eight and how we set that up in the bid wizard, same same principles. Uh, then we're gonna go over uh, how to start a new bid, how to import a quantity takeoff from another software like we went over in uh, nine and ten, blue beam and e takeoff. Uh, enter information about the project how to add equipment into the estimate, how to add a crane to the estimate, go over general conditions, account for consumption of fuel by the equipment, account for the impact of weather, potential weather delays, adding overhead and profit to the estimate, and generation of the duration schedule. Then we'll generate a report that every, of everything that's included in the bid, and then last but not least, we'll generate a bid proposal. So with that said, let's jump right right into the bid wizard. So what we're looking at here is within the Still Erection Bid Wizard, the Still Erection Bid Wizard is cloud-based. So you do need internet access. You can access it anywhere you have internet with a username and a password. When you log in, you're going to land on your dashboard. Within the dashboard, you're going to see the most three current jobs you have bid. It also comes with a project management module, which tracks in real time, whether you're making money or losing money, or if you're on schedule or behind schedule compared to your bid. Really nice feature that comes with the Still Rex and Bid Wizard. Don't know that we're gonna jump into that today because you know we're basically looking at estimating for this, uh, this class we've got going here. Then we come down here, we get our bids total. So basically start tracking your bid win ratios. You're gonna be able to see how many projects you've bid, how many you won, what's pending, lost, total. You can compare, compare uh, first quarter to first quarter of last year. It, it starts doing a tracking and giving you a bid win ratio. Down here we have our general contractors. The bid wizard allows you to upload, bring in all your general contractors and fabricators that you bid to. Because it does generate you a bid proposal on automation, which we'll go into later. And then support and training. Still Rex Bid Wizard is very, very simple to set up. I have step by step videos, step one, step two, step three, walking through that full process of setting up the Bid Wizard to your company specifications in a real simple manner. Let's jump over in, into uh, settings first and we'll just kind of take a tour through the settings section. <clears throat> and we'll come back to the bid list in a little bit. So within settings, when, when you come into settings, it's going to land on the task page. So what the task page is, is all the tasks that we as directors install. So just a little background is, you know, we were, we were a still rector 28 years and we ran up to 160 iron workers. We did all types of projects from your bread and butter, 5,000 square foot projects to your million square foot warehouses hospitals, schools, I mean, we did the whole thing and we performed the full, all the work, miscellaneous, structural, precast, hollow core, I mean, we did it all. We weren't just a structural erector. We did pre engineer metal buildings as well, but we did all the spectrum of steel erection work. And what we did over many, many years is tracked production rates for what it takes a professional crew of iron workers as well as industry standard crew sizes. And we time that over and over and refine these production rates to get them di dialed in. And I want to throw out there too, I mean, we always have A crews and B crews. So we didn't track just the, you know, our top notch crews, we tracked m multiple crews. And then we took an average of the, you know, the A team and let's say the C team, we took an average and came up with these production rates. So when we when we look at that, and inside the still erection bid wizard, we'll just run through what's included in the production rate. So for example, the six to ten standard beam, 
what that's going to include is that full process. So what I mean by that is for that 610 standard beam is to unload, shake out, erect, bolt, torque. So basically from you unloading off the truck to you walking off the job, it encompasses everything it takes to get that beam installed based on a professional crew of iron workers as well as industry standard crew sizes. So we see the labor production rate that is for the full crew to unload, shake out, wreck, bolt, and torque that beam. There's the crane production rate. And of course, there's no welding on a beam because it's bolting. You'll also notice too that in the bid wizard, I have multiple beams 610, 12 to 14, 16 to 21, 24 to 27, 30 to 33, 36 to 44. So, of course, the reason we do that is as that beam gets bigger, you're getting more bolts. So, therefore, it's going to take more time to complete that beam. And so that's why inside of the takeoff software, it makes it very, very simple to be able to uh, just, you know, search for the beams. And it's not like we're, you know, it makes it a very fast process when we're doing a digital takeoff to count the beams. And then another thing just to point out too, is you'll see I have some standard beams, skewed beams, slope beams, and blind beams, where all of these are the same type of beam, but you'll notice the price goes up on each. So it's not like I take off a skewed beam or a slope beam. The reason I do this is on some projects we might want a job and it's a Corps of Engineers job. So I know I got to get more money into a Corps of Engineers job because of the safety requirements and just the, the stuff we have to deal with on that type of project. So what I use these for is to jump my category up so I can get more money in that, uh, in that project in a simple fashion when I'm doing my takeoff. So just to recap, every task inside the bid wizard includes a full process. So if it's bolting, it's including the labor for bolting. If it's welding, it's including the labor for welding. The, the production rates in the bid wizard are defaulted in, but you have the ability to tweak those. You can change them, you know, whatever you need to do to fit your company. I can tell you that they're pretty, they're dialed into what it's going to take a professional iron worker to install, you know, these items. But let's just kind of scroll through there quickly. You can see we have columns. Same concept on the columns. You have average, heavy, blind. Comes with a different price. Tiered columns, so that's your multi-story buildings where you have a splice. Tube steel columns, bolted braces, welded braces, angle braces, double angle braces. And just to point out too, I have, you know, I have it in categories by uh, erect, connect, welded, bolted, and install. For miscellaneous items just wanted to point that out so there's you know an erect course is going to be everything we're going to do with a crane when we come on down girders beam girders joist girders girts bar joist so again just to point it out the joists are going by feet so basically zero to 25 foot 25 to 45 foot joist what that includes is that full process to unload shake out set weld or bolt and bridge so joist includes that full process as that joist gets longer it gets more rows of bridging so that's already accounted for in that production rate come down to purlins trusses and I'll, I'll just say on trusses trusses are a different animal i mean this gives it a placeholder you still have to take a, a moment to think about a truss because there's so many variations of a truss and so the cost can be tremendously different on the different sizes of trusses that we're doing, but that is a placeholder for a truss. Once you bring it in, then you would tweak it to fit the need for that particular truss. Then we get into the connect categories, different types of welds. Then we come down here to moment welds, the moment welds pounds per foot. So basically if we have on a drawing, we have a, a beam with a moment weld on each end. One moment weld is the bot, top flange, bottom flange of one end of the beam. So if a beam had a moment on both ends, we'd be counting two moments on that beam. And it goes pounds per foot. Column splices, so we have tiered columns, we have to splice, weld them. That's where we pick up the weld for that. You know, anchors, different kind of anchors, then we get into install. We have all types of angle conditions. Knee braces, brackets, bridging. So in the joist price, just to point out, if we had a, a project with uh, bolted X bridging, that would be an upcharge to the joist no, so the bridging is already included in the joist production rate. So it's just, we go in and count the, the bridging. Safety cable, channels, shear studs, davits, metal decking, different profiles, stair flights, stair landings, handrails, 
different types of frames, miscellaneous items, tube steel, ladders, and then some other items. And so that, that's a quick run through of the tasks that are in the bid wizard. And I'll show you in a moment how we can add as many new categories and new tasks into the bid wizard, very, very simple. But while we're on this page, I wanna talk a little bit about production rates. <clears throat> I believe it is in module three, you guys were kind of showed on how to generate, well, composite crew, wage rate, and then generate production rates. What I've done within the Steel Rex and Bid Wizard has you know, made, it, made it real simple. So within the Bid Wizard here, if we go to here to production rate calculator, I have a production rate calculator that's a count, linear foot, or square foot. So let's open up this count one. When a calculator pops open, basically it's going to take the unmarked up wage rate that you have default in the system for your company. It's going to be a, a defaulted eight hours a day. And so the way this works <clears throat> is you have to think about whatever it is you're installing. I don't care what it is. If it's a count item, you use the count production rate calculator. But whatever it is you're installing, you need to think through that full process of how many can you do in a day and what size of crew do you need to do that. Basically, what, you know, what we showed you in Module 3 and you know, how to do that. So I'm just going to come in here and say five men. And then I have to think, you know, how many of those can I install on a day? Full process. So we'll say 30, whatever these items are, we'll say 30 of them. Unload and shake out crew size. I, I do this, I, I could call all that good and just leave it at that, but I always add just a little bit more. So I put five more men, then I have to think, how long will it take me to unload and shake out each one of these pieces that I got going to install on a day? So I'm just going to say six minutes per each piece. And then if that item welds, I have to think about how long is it going to take the guy to weld it. This is for the welding machine only because up here that welding, the task of welding it in place would be included in the labor. So this is for the welding machine only. So let's just say these were beams and, or tube stills and they welded on each end. If it welded on each end, how long is it going to take me to make that weld? Is it going to take me 30 minutes? Is it going to take me an hour? Let's just say it's going to take me an hour on each end. So I would put in 120 minutes. And of course now our weld production rate goes to two hours. If I put in 60 minutes, that weld production rate is one hour. Then do I need a crane to install these items? If I do, I check mark that. And so what's happened now is I've generated a crew production rate based on my knowledge, your experience from what you know you can do in the field for a crew size of five men to install 30 of these a day the production rate is 1.8333, the crane production rate is 0 0.2667, and the weld production rate for the welding machine only is one hour. Then it goes a little bit further and it tells me it's gonna take this crew 16 minutes each piece to install, which kind of gives you a check. You know, does that make sense? If it does and you're good to go, if not, well, you might make, make an adjustment. And then they'll, they'll show you the unmarked marked up cost for each piece. So this is a very, very easy way to generate the production rates because you, you saw back in module three how you had to sit there and think about your production rate and how long it's going to take you and make that calculation. And when you got to think about when we're estimating, we're doing the same thing on different jobs over and over and over again. So what the Steel Rection Bid Wizard is basically done is took everything you learned in the last eight modules and put it all in to a simplified system to generate a bid and where once you're done with that bid, you're still gonna have the same thing for the next bid. So it just makes it very, very simple, becomes very uh, time efficient because you're not redoing the same thing over and over and over and over again as you're bidding all these different jobs. But this is the count calculator, the concept for the linear foot, the exact same thing. Just a little bit of different format. That would be for linear foot. And then we have one for square foot as well. Which makes it, you know, whatever production rate you need to generate for whatever you're working on, you know, it's very simple at your fingertips. Be able to plug in your experience, what you know you can do in a day with how many men, and it will generate your production rate in a very, very quick fashion. So that's a quick overview of the production rates and the tasks are in the bid wizard. Let's just kind of jump through settings because you kind of see you know, how it's set up.
before we get to bringing a bid in. So if we come to task categories, under task categories, the nice thing about Steel Rex Bid Wizard is it's not locked down. You can add whatever you want to add to the Bid Wizard. So if I wanted to add a new category, let's just say, I don't know, hollow core. I would just come here and write add root category because, you know, it has it. everything we do is in the record in there, but you're not stuck to the only thing that's in there. You can add whatever you want into the system. So we just put in hollow core, the precast planks, right? We'll hit add. And then if we came down here to the schedule, we'd have to add that as well. We put hollow core in the schedule. And then we come back up here to the new category we added. We go to the schedule category, do a drop down, select hollow core. And now hollow core is in, uh, you know, it's a, a new scheduled item. And then if we come back to task, in task, now we see a new category called hollow core to add a task all we have to do is hit add task 25 foot planks whatever whatever you're gonna call that new task is it an each is it an hour linear foot so we select each because that'd be each then I would come in you know just to show you how it work come to count we'll say a crew size of five men we can do 70 of these a day. And that, in this one, it would, it would include the unload shaking out in that number, so I wouldn't add it. <clears throat> there would be no welding, so I create uh, generate crane production rate. And then all I have to do now is I could come here. We copy this. Paste in the labor, come to the crane production rate, copy that. Zero point zero for welding production rate. And now we just added a task. Each one of those 25 foot planks based on what I put in there is gonna be 2701 based on the wage rate that's in here per each plank. Uh, so well, basically that's that's how we're going to add new tasks to the bid wizard in a very very quick fashion uh, so that's that's a little bit about how easy it is to add new categories and new tasks into the system let me go ahead and get these out of here real quick Then we'll jump over into the equipment section just to run through that real quick. Here in the equipment section, all this is already defaulted in the bid wizard. You can change and rename them. It doesn't, uh, you're not tied to these. You can add more equipment. If you don't like what it's named, you go ahead and change that. You put in your monthly rate, what you're paying for that equipment. Myself, personally, we would always go out to all the different vendors for rental companies. And I would say, hey, look, I'm looking for quotes for the next six months. Uh, can you give me the rates? And I'd give them a list of, you know, all the equipment we always rent from them. And I would go to three different ones, just like I have to give a bid to everybody. I'd make them, you know, the equipment suppliers, rental companies, did the same thing to me. Give me uh, the, you know, all their quotes. And then I would start using the cheapest one out of those three quotes for that next six months. And I would do that every six months and update the rate for the bid wizard. As far as equipment goes, burn fuel rate per hour. We'll talk about that with a smart fuel calculator. Environmental charge, whatever that rental company's charging. The delivery, you basically could have, you could put delivery here or delivery down here for freight for equipment, but you don't want to put them in both because if you do, you're double dipping. I like keeping my equipment here for my, you know, the what the rental company charges to move in and out. And then we have a tax rate. So whatever your tax rate is in your state, you plug in that tax rate and it'll multiply that tax rate. And then we come down to cranes. Cranes, same concept. These cranes are listed. You can rename them, change them. You want to put in your hourly rates here for the crane, a burn fuel rate for that crane per hour. 
which this comes defaulted as you're seeing it right now put in a tax rate I typically do not put in a delivery rate defaulted because depending on who I'm getting the crane from they might charge me you know one company might charge me this much another one's gonna charge me that much so I if I'm having to put in a move in and out for a crane I do that in the bid form itself so that's uh on equipment we'll jump into general conditions general conditions you can add all kinds of different items into the bid wizard for general conditions these come defaulted you can't change those those are default because it's part of the of the system but in here you can come in here and add as many different types of general conditions you want and then in the bid process you can select out of the bid form all these different general conditions you have the, the ability to do it by hour day or unit then we come to the wage rate so I believe again was in module three we talked about wage rates we talked about composite crew rates uh, so you know that's gonna make a little bit of sense to you here is how the wages are set up in the bid wizard when it when you get the system it's defaulted like this right here so you have a foreman for journeyman to apprentices so what I've done here is you have was it one two three four five six seven employees so what it does when you put that wage rate in here per hour and this is just an iron workers wage it's going to total it up and then divide it by seven and it gives me a composite crew rate so it makes it very simple to generate a composite crew rate we always did that for competitive to be competitive we would generate a composite crew rate and then the other thing you see here is scale and you've got private so basically you know you in your contract you might have two separate in our contract we had two separate uh, wage rates we had a scale we had a private so that would allow us if I was, I was bidding private work then I was able to you know I, in the bid form I would be able to select private rate or the other way to look at it is predetermined wage rate non predetermined wage rate so you set those two up default the one that you want it to be so of course it'd be default to scale because that's going to be the most frequent used uh, wage rate and then we come down here here we're gonna have your fringes whatever it is per hour that you're putting in for fringes your tax burden so basically to get the system set up this is per hour so you'd have to get with your accountant and uh, you know figure out what that per hour tax burden is you'd have to get the workman's comp average per hour the way we came up with that we have multiple workman's comp codes 5102 5538 for decking um, 50 40 for I think it's under two stories or over I would take my most expensive which is under two stories for structural I would take the hourly rate of miscellaneous and decking metals 5538 I would total those up and divide it by three and that would give me an average per hour for workman's comp and that gets you pretty close in the ballpark of you know having a consistent number to run with for workman's comp uh, general liability again that's broken down to an hour you know hourly rate you'd have to get with your insurance provider and, and figure out what that's gonna be and right here's what's important to note what you are currently bidding on a job unmarked up wage rate has to be the same amount here in the system <clears throat> as what it is when you're looking at bidding a job then on down here we have unit prices that is for a unit price report that and if you're doing unit price work you plug you fill this out and then on that on that report it'll pull in your iron worker your crane, crane operator which is it's just a, a report that comes out in the bid wizard for unit price and we'll come up to project parameters project parameters is basically your default settings so you your mark up your your profit and overhead I mark mine at 35% job by job I'm gonna adjust it but I always want to start looking at it 35% that was for my company uh, equipment marked up 15% hourly equipment crane 15% general conditions I typically didn't mark up and fuel 15% and then your default crew size so that way when it comes to the bid form these are defaulted in the system and then one other thing that settings look at is proposal information so here's the bid proposal It'll make more sense once we run a bid proposal, but you have the ability to come in here, change language, because it comes with this defaulted language that's in there. But you have to come in here in the settings and change it, add more title blocks if you need to, 
but this is where you, you work the bid proposal. And from there, we'll jump into the bid list. So on the bid list page, you're gonna see job numbers that are created for the job. You can, on the bid, create your own job numbers and not let the system do it, but it does automatically generate job numbers. You see your job names, the selling amount, the durations for that project, because the system does generate you a, a still direction duration schedule, who the estimator is. So if you had multiple estimators using the system, whoever that estimator is would show up in the dashboard here on the different project. Status button in progress one, loss. So basically that's how you're going to, uh, that controls the dashboard for the bid win ratio. Start projects goes, that sends it into the project management module. View of course is to look at it. Duplicate is if I'm doing some Walgreens that are all typical, I can do one Walgreens duplicate it and then just rename it. And it's pretty much, you know, just a shortcut to get that bid done quicker. Delete of course is to delete. From there, we'll go into, to start a bid, all we have to do is click, uh, select new bid. And then we land on the bid page, the bid form, basically. We come in and put a, a job name. Say the location. And then I come over right away to job status put in progress and here's the job number. If I wanted to change the jobs numbers, I could. I myself just let the system generate them. It starts with a year every year, so it's 2000. It'll, it'll generate that for you in automation. All this here will populate. So I'm just gonna jump down to the, where we bring the task in. Very, very simple process. Here we have task configuration. Right here, rec, connect, install, other, that's what we saw in the settings. If I was to open this up, it would show all those tasks that we've seen in the, in the settings. But we talked about Bluebeam and an e-takeoff, how we can do the takeoff, generate a report, send it out into Excel. And so once I open up the bid wizard, all I have to do is say import task from file. But before I do that, if I've done the takeoff by floor or by area, I have to set that up first. And so the job I'm gonna bring in, I did the takeoff by floor. So what I have to do is come in and type in what those areas are called. So we had the second floor. And the benefit of doing this will be that now I'm gonna have my price by floor as well as I'll have the schedule, the duration schedule built out by floor. And I always do all my projects by area or by floor, just because it gets me more dialed in. Cause I could bring the whole thing in. If I didn't take it off, I said I took the three story building off. I didn't do any areas. I would just hit import and I would bring that in. But for me, I much rather have it broken out by floor. That way, you know, my man hours, train hours, weld hours, and schedule is broken out by those areas. So once I set up the areas, then I just come to import tasks from file. And you'll see that I integrate with several softwares that are out there in, in the industry. Strumis, Tecla, eTakeoff, SDS2, FabSuite, PlanSwift, OnScreen, Bluebeam. And so I'm just gonna select Bluebeam as, as a software I did the takeoff in, I would come to choose file. Then I have to navigate to where I had saved that file. So where you'd be saving it is in the, where the plans are at. We have the plans app for that project. We select the file. And then we hit import. I'll get a notification saying, oh, my internet's running slow today. I'll get a uh, notification saying, well done, quantities for 37 tasks assessed to be imported. 
And so one thing to note too, if, if something didn't come in, you can rest assured you would have a list saying, hey, these items did not come in. So it, if you do get an error on the import process, it will let you know that something did not come in. Then once the bid, the, the takeoff is brought in, I always come down here because each one of these task categories have right at 300 tasks in them. And of course this job does not fill every task. So I delete zero task. Once I hit delete zero task, it will remove all the tasks that are not in this bid. And then if I expand all, you will see that only that the only thing that's left in the bid form is what was in that project. And also want to point out too, you have the ability in the bid wizard to come and change the name of a task. If for whatever reason you wanted to, you could change it, rename it, make something more sense to you. Or, you know, if you're down the road, somebody else is going to be looking at it and you took it off one way and maybe it's something else make it clear. You can change that name, uh, labor hours. You can tweak that production rate right here on the fly. Same thing with crane and well time. And then another thing to point out too is if we're on a multi-story building and as we get up to the fourth, fifth floor, it takes time longer for our guys to get to the place of work. So our production goes down. So what I can do in that case is would come here to the roof, let's just say, and I could hit adjust rates. What that does for me is for everything on that roof, I can come in here and just say, plus 10% or plus 5% plus 15% whatever it's going to be hit update and it will raise these production rates of the roof up by that 10% that I selected. I can also do it by category adjust the rates just by the category which just allows me to massage my bid to however I need you know however I see fit for that particular job. So that's how simple it is to bring in that uh, takeoff into the bid wizard. And so then we'll jump up here to the top. The next step we'd have to do is project information. Project information are just some things we have to fill out. Furthest pick and heaviest pick, that's just for you to think what size crane you're needing, you know, how what's that heaviest pick. So we're just gonna say furthest pick's 80 foot out and it is 6,800 pounds. So that, you know, to me, that doesn't change anything in the system, but that makes me know that I thought about, hey, what size crane do I need? I plug it in there. So if somebody's looking over my shoulder, wanting to see what I had, uh, you know, what, what was the heaviest piece, there it is documented. And now you guys can go pick the right crane that you need for the project. Average crew size, the way average crew size works is basically what we have here that I brought in is a three-story, 42,000 square foot building. So if I had a crew size of five men, average crew size of five men, it would take me 49 days to erect this job because the schedule is already built. As soon as I bring in the task, that schedule, duration schedule is built. So what I can do is on this particular job, I would use nine men. So I plug in nine men. When I put in nine men, that schedule now goes to 30 days. What I like about this feature is a general contractor call me up and say, hey, your price looks good, but how long is it gonna take you? And I say, well, 30 days. And he says, well, you know what? We need it in 20, because that's what they do. So if I had a project where I can spread men out and be productive, that being the key word, spread men out and be productive, I can come here and I put 14 men. When I put 14 men, now I see I'm down to 22 days, so I pretty much get what he needs to get done in his time frame, And so I could tell him, yeah, I can do that. <clears throat> now, if I couldn't spread them in out and be productive, I'd have to leave it at nine men. And I would come and add overtime. So to add overtime, all I have to do is I would type in time and a half. How many men am I gonna work overtime? We'll say five men. How many, what's the total of hours I'm gonna work? I have to tell the system that. And to know how many days I just made up with adding that, I can come down to durations. I can come over here to overtime and you'll see I just picked up 10 days based on five men, 400 hours. So that, you know, that would get me to where I needed to be for that particular general contractor's need of getting the job done in 20 days. Put in my total wage, 
and it's going to calculate across my overtime wage. It'll calculate across to you know to bring it into a dollar amount. But that's how we'd add overtime. Pretty simple process. Makes it very easy. Makes you not have to think too hard about it. But that's how you that's how you add overtime. Fuel cost per gallon works with a smart fuel calculator. We'll talk about that in a moment. Subsistence, travel time, per diem, whatever you guys call that. If I'm having to pay iron workers to travel to the job, I plug that hourly rate in right there. Square footage of the project comes in based on the square footage of the deck. And then we got, are we working five eights, four tens, adjust that accordingly. In the blind, inside access is just information for you to think about. In the blind, can the crane operator see the iron worker setting the piece? I do have blind tasks. You know, we have to either use a flag man or uh, radios. Takes a little bit longer. So just something to think about. Inside access, can I get on the slab? Do I need any special equipment? Uh, once again, just information to think about. <clears throat> now, one thing I didn't mention while we are in settings on wages but inside the bid wizard, we have the ability to set up as many different areas. If you're working in different areas, you can set up as many as you want within the bid wizard. Let's just select Kansas City. If we put it at scale, you'll see the wage rate of 67.63. And if I want to take this job and say I'm in New York Metro, I already set this up in settings, right? 125.70. So you can go in and set as many wage rates as you need to in the still erection bid wizard and then job by job wherever that job's located out of the drop down you select where you're at and it pulls in that wage rate for that particular area the next thing we come to is equipment how do we get equipment in the bid wizard very simple I hit add equipment this drop down comes in now here's a list we've seen in settings we need a forklift so a 10,000 pound forklift it pulls in a quantity of one, puts in my rate that I have in settings. Let's grab some boom lifts. We'll say we need four of those, 40 to 45 foot. And so then I just change that to four. And now it's going to calculate based on the four pieces of equipment. And also keep in mind, it is calculating the timeline that I'm going to be on that project with those lifts based on my average crew size and working days. So just for example, right now it's a six weeks. If I change this to 14, man, now I'm down to 4.4 weeks. So it does a calculation for you. You don't have to think about it. It is basically running that calculation for you. Now, yes, if you have the situation where, you know what, I don't need that boom lift there the full time or the forklift the full time, I only need it there four weeks. At that point, I could change that if I wanted to to four weeks. You have control of that. But it's basing, you know, right away the time frame. You need the equipment on the job based on your uh, average crew size and working days. Freight for equipment, we spoke about that in settings a little bit. $300, bucks, 150 in, $150 out. Whatever your rental company charges you, you default that in settings and it'll pull that in. Crane, same idea there. Select the crane. Do the drop down. What crane do I need? We'll need a 40 ton. Once I pull that 40 ton in, it goes, it brings the hours that these production rates assigned to all these tasks total up to and brings those hours for the crane in. There's my defaulted $165 an hour for that crane. Of course, you're going to set that for your company's need. If I had to do it in and out, a move in and out, I would plug in delivery there. And then from there, we come down to general conditions. Under general conditions, you have your work truck. You need to figure out how much you want to charge for that work truck per day. Consumables, that's your oxygen acetylene, welding rod, grinding disc, so on and so forth. The way you come up, arrive with that number, it's an hourly number. And what we did is we would take our past history of how much do we spend last year on all the consumables, all the oxygen, all the acetylene, all the welding wire, wire welding rods, all the consumable items, we would total that up. And then we total up how many man hours did we work last year. And then we take the man hours divided by the dollar amount for the consumables, and that gives me a very good hourly rate that is going to be pretty good moving forward to cover consumables moving forward. Now, granted, some projects might be really heavy welding, a lot of, a lot of wire feed welding or something. 
you kind of look at that at a job by job basis that you might oh, I might need to throw a little bit more money in this particular job because of whatever reason that might be. Now I know a lot of you guys are new, you know, new to estimating, wanting to start new companies, so you don't have that back history. So I can tell you, for the most part, you could probably be pretty safe. I would maybe jump it up a little bit of what's defaulted in the system for that dollar amount. But after you do a couple jobs, you can go back and total up the cost of the consumables on those jobs, how many man hours will work, and that's going to kind of give you a pretty quick, real accurate number of what it's going to cost you moving forward per hour for consumables. I hope that makes sense. Uh, welding machines, if you own the welding machines, you're going to plug it in an hourly rate. Uh, if you own them, you're going to plug in for maintenance and upkeep, welding rod, leads, or welding leads, welding stingers, grounds, just basically upkeep. If you're renting them, you have to plug in for, you know, something for rental. Then we come down to the smart fuel calculator. The smart fuel calculator is a recent enhancement I did. I really love this. Before, in general conditions, I had a, a line item for fuel. And I would kind of have to guess what equipment I had, what cranes I had, how much for fuel am I going to burn per day. And I have to manually think about that. What I did with the smart fuel calculator is I went to the manufacturer and I got the burn fuel rate per hour for each piece of equipment. We tell the system that what the fuel cost is per gallon. Then with the burn fuel rate that we add to each piece of equipment, it's going to calculate and tell me it's going to cost me 45 bucks a day for the fuel, for the, I mean for the forklift, $22 a day for the boom lift. Crane goes by hour, welder goes by hour, and then totals me up per day fuel usage for the, that equipment. And yes, I, I do hear some people say, well, you know, we're not going to use it, that piece of equipment all day long and burn that much fuel. But you also got to think about how are we filling that equipment up? You know, we're having to have an ironwork go pour five gallon uh, jugs into, you know, the piece of equipment. So you also know how, how are you accounting for that time? So to me, this would, would come out very well and have your dollar amount covered for your fuel in a very quick accurate fashion so it'll total up fuel pure uh, fuel total per day and then we have our total for the whole job which makes it really nice then the next thing to talk about is weather so when, when we're in business and you guys probably have the same thing in your contracts as well if we have iron workers show up they can't go to work because it's raining, we still have to pay two hours show up time. You know, that's something we want, depending on the time of year, what location you're at, geographically, that, uh, you know, that can play into a job uh, in a pretty big way as far as what weather costs. So what I came up for that is something called weather projections. So the way the weather projections work is if we know the start date, because the general told us, we plug that in. If we don't know the start date, we have to guess three or four months out, because that's typically what it is. So at that point, it's kind of a guess, so it's not going to be all that accurate, because we don't really know the job's going to start at that point. But that'll give us an idea. So we select the date. It knows the end date, because it's already built the schedule. Then I got to come in here, and I select my state. So whatever state you're working in, and keep in mind, this is based on the state capital. But whatever state you're working in, you would select that state. At that point, it goes into weatherbase.com, which is track historical uh, lost weather days due to weather for the last 30 years. And it's going to tell me in February, I'm going to have about 7.7% average lost days, about a day total against my men, total hours against my wage rate. And it's going to throw me some money in here for lost potential days for weather. Now, granted, we still have to be low on the job. So would I, when I'm bidding this, would I throw this full dollar amount in? It would probably depend on the time of year and how my knowledge of the weather is to be because I still have to be low. But what I find this is a powerful tool is if a general contractor told me, hey, and I'm living in a winter state, for example. General contractor told me, hey, I'm uh, ready to start this in September. That's what you know we're going to do. So plan that. We're going to keep it out of the winter. So we plan on September to, to bid it or August, whatever it may be. And then they wind up pushing the job, postponing, postponing until January. Well, January turns out in your state to be the worst potential time to do any kind of construction, which costs us a ton more money 
what this does is give me some ammunition to go fight with that general contractor saying, look, you told me I was starting in August. Now here I'm in January, right in the worst time of the year. And this is what it's costing me. So just some ammunition to go fight with, as well as some knowledge of what could potentially impact you on a project. So if you leave it into the bid, if you leave it enabled, right now it's in the bid. If I disable it, it pulls it out of that bid. <clears throat> so then the next thing to talk about after we got everything in is our profit and overhead. So the way I have it set up is I have profit and overhead broken out by all the different categories. So basically markup for labor is 35%, equipment's 15%, freight for equipment's 15%, Hourly cranes, 15%, general conditions, and fuel is all separate. And so it was our goal when we were getting all this set up is to get all these tasks that we do as an erector dialed in for the production rate that I know it's going to cost me to install this. And as I told you, we retract and retract different crews to get our production rates dialed in for every task that's in the bid wizard. And it was our goal to have it defined that I know I can do this job for this much money. And then I would adjust my bid with my profit and overhead, depending on how tight I wanted to get. And I could play around with those numbers and be able to see, uh, you know, how tight do I want to get basically. So after we set the profit and overhead, we come up here to the top and we look at actual total cost actual selling costs, projected profit and overhead. That's what a number that I always look at. It's going to be a $230,000 job and I'm looking to make potentially 49,000 and almost $50,000 on that job. So to me, that would be a pretty good number. Sometimes you're going to see it might be a little bit lower Then this tells me in a quick snapshot, is it worth my risk for my company to go and do this job for that dollar amount? Uh, working days, how many man hours, actual cost per square foot, selling cost per square foot, average markup, how many pieces can be set per day on average. So it's basically telling me I can set wreck 22 pieces a day. Now, some folks say, well, that, you know, that seems a little low. Well, the reality is you gotta, you gotta understand that that's including the full process to unload, shake out, wreck, bolt, torque. These production rates include that full process. So it could be like, cause we're not just looking at that number as saying, I can set this many beams a day. We're looking at the full process. And then it's gonna tell me crane days, projected crane days. So that's a quick run through of that. Let's see. So the next thing we'll jump into is the, the schedule told you that it's building us a schedule on automation. So I come down to durations. We see our duration summaries. We see the second floor, third floor roof and stairs. We have our hours broken out. So what we have now is days. This is a duration schedule. The idea behind this schedule is general contractor asked me, Hey, what's your durations for the different floors? That's what this is. So now I have my durations to give him. Now, these are dead nuts days. I would not want to give the general contractor my dead nuts days because we know how things go out there. It doesn't always go as planned. So I would want to pad it a little bit. So I'm just going to add some extra days just to uh, put a little cushion on it, a little padding, let's say. And so basically what we did, we, we've added uh, five extra days. We would hit save. And we'll see our working days went up here to 35 as well. Then we go to next step. On next step, we see the schedule built out, out in a bar chart format that will give us our durations that we can print out, give it to whoever needs it, makes it look very professional, very clean. And that's how the schedule works. Now I'm gonna jump back just real quick and show you something else. I'm gonna throw overtime in there. 
and to show you how that works. If I add over time, we'll say five men, 400 hours, because we needed to pick up those 10 days after I added the padding, but we need to pick up 10 days. Come down to durations. Now we see 10 over here. So for us to be able to pick up that overtime and get the schedule to come down, right now we're at 35. Basically, I would have to add, let's just put three days there. Just to make it simple, we'll put uh, one and one. So we're going to come in there and uh, add the overtime. Now you'll see the days goes down to 25 because we added this overtime into the schedule. So, it, you know, it pulls it out. So it allows you to do all this stuff without having to think about it too much. It makes it a, a simple process. So from there, we'll jump into the reports. You have multiple reports that come out of here. We're just going to talk about a couple of them. Generate unit price reports. And I'll show you that just real quickly. Unit price report. Uh, let me get rid of that. The unit price report. Wait for a moment for it to come up. Basically, what the unit price report is, sometimes when you're bidding work, you will have a contract in there that says, hey, we need unit prices for everything. You know, they'll, they'll spell out a list of what you want. We also want unit prices for your iron workers and operators. And they want to have that in the contract in case, you know, maybe it's a design build or whatever it is. They want to be able to know what it's going to cost them in the future when they add stuff. And so typically on those contracts, they'll say, hey, you can't mark up your labor no more than 15%. So I would change this to 15%. I get a notification saying, hey, you're changing the, the markup in the unit price report, but not in the bid. So now what happens is now we have our iron workers marked up 15%, all of our equipment. And then we also have every single item that was in this bid. We have a unit price generated for that. That makes it very, very simple when you're having to do unit price work. Pretty simple concept. I mean, when you look at it from this perspective, but you trying to generate that on your side, is typically a pain in the ass trying to generate unit prices. And from there, we'll go into the other report. Uh, job cost report. The job cost report will come out in PDF or Excel. I'll, I'm going to open it up in Excel. And the idea behind this report is I had a lot of clients that wanted to integrate with accounting softwares. So that, that's what the Excel report is good for because most accounting softwares will accept uh, Excel into them. And inside the bid wizard as well, you can put cost codes on all the tasks. So that way you can assign code, cost codes, they come out with this report, and then that will integrate into a uh, different types of accounting softwares. So here's the job cost report. In Excel, of course, you have your job name, date of the bid, who the estimator was, location. It's going to tell you your total man hours, total erected man hours. It'll break those out between erection, erected out hours and miscellaneous hours, total miss hours, erected crane hours, detailed crane hours, total crane hours, number of crane days, projected pieces to be erected, which is always a great number to know going into a project. We got 475 pieces on this job and an average of 22 set per day. Then it breaks down the project cost. 
man hour cost, equipment cost, dental condition cost, total job cost. Then we come into equipment weekly. So all our boom lifts, forklifts, our crane, dental conditions, and then it gets into our fringes. So basically when you set up and setting, you put in what your different costs are for fringes, where it's comp, tax, general liability, it is going to total up and tell me out of this dollar amount how much is going to fringes, how much is going to workman's comp, so on and so forth. So it makes it really nice, gives you a snapshot that right out of the bat you see that money's gone, as well as crane and so on and so forth, but gives you a really good overview right out of the gate. Make sure we got all those. Then we come down here. So it, it breaks it down on and a little bit different. So basically how we look across here, six to 10 standard beams, there's 34 of them. There's a man hours, labor hours, crane hours, crane cost. Schedule values just to install those six to 10 standard beams, which is good sometimes for billing. Erected pieces per day on average and a cost for each one. And it breaks it down a little bit further. It's gonna tell me I got 269 beams, about 10 crane days. And I should be able to set on average of these beams about 27. It'll do that to every category for the columns, brace frames, joists, and it breaks it down in that fashion for all erect items. And then we come into the miscellaneous items. And let me point out to the cost codes that are over here as well. You set those up in settings. They're not default in the system. You'd have to sign cost codes to all the tasks if you wanted to use cost codes. Uh, then we have our detailed items. If it's uh, per each, it's gonna be per each, linear foots per foot, square foots per square foot. So basically, everything you want to know about this project dialed in in a very efficient manner. The next thing we look at is we've already massaged the bid where you know we like where we're at. The next thing I'm going to do is generate a bid proposal. Very simple process. I just hit generate bid proposal. Here you'd, you'd want to put the name of the job and the plan dates. I'm just going to put as just to put something there. But you, you'd put name of the job and the date of the plans. Specifications, we'd say yes to acknowledge them. Addendums, let's say there's six. Here's the default language that is uh, inside the settings right now. You change this to make it be your language. Your exclusions, bid amount, base bid additions, base bid deductions. If you had a bond, you'd plug that in, the dollar amount of the bond. How many days are you gonna hold the bid for? We go to next step. On next step, when you first get the system, you would have to come and when you first start adding contractors, very simple process, we just hit new contractor, fill in the contractor's name, all their information, add the different, different estimators that's at that particular contract that you bid to and hit save and then that's added to it. So to generate a bid proposal for any contractor, all we do is select them. Select who we're gonna bid that job to, then view selected contractors. On this page, we're going to select the estimator we're addressing that proposal to. And then also when we were in business, I mean, some general contractors are tough to work for. They don't pay very well. They're paying ass to work for actually, but what we still bid them but we'd bid them 10% higher. So I, I would say plus 10%. Let's say this guy treats us really nice, pays us on time, easy to work with. I give him a 5% break, hoping to help him get the job. And then with this one, we leave alone. What that's doing is just in the dollar amount of that bid proposal, up by 10%, down by 5% in a very simple fashion. And then we hit generate. Once we hit generate, it sends it into a zip folder. And so you have PDS with that contractor's name. So let me go ahead and open these up. There we go. So basically that's what the bid proposal is gonna look like. You can upload your company logo in it, into the system. So it'll throw it there. Here's a bid proposal, all the information you need for that general contractor. We see that dollar amount, 258. We 
come to here, this dollar amount will probably be different based on that percentage that we put in that box, 223. And so that's a bid proposal, very simple process. Now you take that PDF, email it, fax it, whatever you gotta do to get that bid proposal out, but it makes it quick and easy to be able to uh, generate your bid proposal on automation. So let's go back in here to the bid because it just come to me that I forgot to talk about one thing within that bid list or within the bid. That's an important thing to point out. So I kind of skipped over. What we didn't talk about, we, we talked about general conditions, but I didn't talk about adding general conditions. When I showed you in settings that we had general conditions that we could add, and then in the bid, select them. So if I hit add general conditions, I get the drop down. And that's for example, you see it, whatever we set in settings up, it'll be there. But let's just say safety cable. Uh, in this job, we need 5,000 feet that we have to supply the cable, and it's 55 cents a foot. So I, I forgot to mention that about adding general conditions. It makes it very simple to whatever you want to put as a list inside of settings or general conditions to pull them into the bid. So I forgot to mention that. So I just wanted to throw that out there so make sure I had it covered. And that is basically the run through of the Still Erection Bid Wizard. I mean, for the last, well, if you were in person class, it'd be the last four days. You went through and learned about old school estimating and I mean, that's all the principles of it. Still Wrecking Bid Wizard took all those principles and I created it into a digital process to get you a system in place that you can, you know, start plugging and playing all kinds of different projects and it doesn't matter what kind of project, it can be bid through the Still Wrecking Bid Wizard. Uh, let me jump here real quick. I'll just say here at the end of it, I, I appreciate your, your time to learn more about the Still Erection Bid Wizard. If you have any questions about any content that I covered in this video, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Number is 505-249-2390. And you can also find out more information over at my website, stillestimatingsolutions.com. I wish you a great rest of your day and take care.